Okay, we left off last time um, making sure that these these people, these circles, um, would not be touching the initial stage of being generated. So they always had a gap between them. Uh, one thing I noticed by playing this over and over again was whenever I press play, our random movement didn't seem quite as random as we'd like it to be. Um, if you notice, every time I keep pressing reset, all of the all of the people, all of the balls are going to go to the right and down. Um, so that doesn't appear to be very random. We're all going right and down. Obviously, with the exception of those that already hit the boundary and then travel to the left or up or both. So we're going to start off today by making this a little bit more random. And because last time we also changed our ints to floats, um, it allows us to have a little bit more randomness to, <coughs> or a few more values, a few more values that we could have potentially, uh, rather than just VX being between 1 and 4, so 1, 2, 3 and VY being 1, 2, 3. So there's a very limited amount of velocity X and velocity Y that we could randomly generate. And none of it would end up with the uh, people initially traveling to the left or initially traveling up. Because these would always give us numbers between one, uh, between one and four, uh, not inclusive of four. Um, so numbers one, two, and three. So we'd always be moving from left to right um, and always move, moving from top to bottom. I'm going to change these from being just for numbers from one, between one and three inclusively, um, to being a, looking a bit more randomly. Um, so, da, 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 da. We're going to, I'm going to randomly have it still from one to four. I'm going to start off with that. So I'm going to make this new integer called, um, what should I go for? New velocity x. Um, so it's going to be a random integer from one to three still. Um, and then We'll go for times in that, so new velocity x, times in it by random, but this time instead of using just next, I'm going to go for next double. So that will always return a random number that is greater than or equal to zero and less than um one so it'll give me more of a range <coughs> more of a range of, of potential numbers and giving us some um not just numbers one two and three but a great range within that so we'll have it all the way from zero all the way up to potentially um potentially three still being selected. And I'm also going to cast it to being a float because that's what we've got our floats. Um, and then we'll do the same for um, for velocity and y. Again, possibly didn't need to make a new variable here, could have just um, done this all on the same line, but we've started it now. new y times by and the same again casting to a float random next double and so now when we run it we'll see hopefully um, a greater range of speeds um, we've still not got any of them traveling from uh, right to left or down to up um, but we'll do that in a moment so yeah, there's there's definitely some slower ones in here now. 
Um, definitely can see that in comparison. There's a greater range of movements. So the pattern doesn't appear to be as random. Uh, sorry, the pattern appears to be more random. Um, but we've still got that moving from the top left downwards and across. And you see there, we've got a really slow moving one as an example of how random this can be now. <coughs> okay, so to choose left, right, up, down, I'm um, just going to go for an if statement, um, random dot next. Uh, we'll go for double again, um, and then if the, it is less than uh, 0 0.5, that's, that's going to be half the amounts that we can choose. Um, then VX VX is going to be VX with a minus. A negative VX. So it's going to be the opposite direction. So if that came out as the number 3.5, and then we randomly got a number that was less than 0.5 here, we'd change that 3.5 to minus 3.5. And then, same again, randomly getting it to choose if the number is less than 0.5, and if it is, changing the y direction to its minus version. So it'll be going up, down, and also down, up. <coughs> so run it now, we should see some move initially starting to move uh, from right to left and from up and down where the, previously they weren't moving in those directions. Yeah, you could see that there wasn't an initial sway all down to the bottom right corner. It was just going, they're just starting anywhere. We'll up the numbers. Yet yeah, there's no general trend now. Um, they're all just going all over the place. So it's seemingly looking a lot more random. Um, next up, well, last time we made sure that the circles didn't touch each other at the, at the start, that they were always separate. Um, and currently we've got no way of checking mm -hmm. collision between them. So that's what we'll be doing next. Um, we'll be making sure that they can bounce off each other, not just walk through each other. Um, and then we'll just be one step away from having somebody infected and having new people that um, that are socially distancing that are staying put. So we can really get our simulation going. So that's increased our randomness. Some people travel faster than others. <coughs> okay, so we want these people to um, be colliding. We want the people to be colliding with each other um, and changing direction based on those collisions. So, last time we ended up with creating, we ended up creating um, some new methods, uh, get center x, get center y, uh, to return to us the centers of these circles. Um, that enabled us to use get center and Pythagoras, um, the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared, um, and that would get us the distance between those two. We use that distance to determine, actually, are they colliding? If the distance was less than or equal to the diameter of one of these circles or the radius plus the radius of the other, um, then they collided. <coughs> so we're going to use that information again to help determine whether they've collided. And then we're going to have to do some, um, some clever things to make sure that um, they move away from each other after that collision has occurred. So, please excuse my drawing skills again. 
So our one circle colliding with another. We can detect this collision because this distance will be less than uh, the width of one of these, uh, the full width, so essentially two, two radius distance. Um, the circles that we've got in this simulation are all the exact same size, so last time we just used uh, the width, which would be two, two lots of the radius, the diameter, essentially. Um, when we find this collision out, um, we'll want to move the circles apart, kind of going against physics a bit, and just setting them apart from each other. And then once they're set apart, we need to change the direction they were moving in. So if they were moving that way and that way, um, at the end of the collision, they need to be moving that way and that way. And what we're going to do is just swap over, swap over their velocities. And that's going to give us some rudimental um, collision and movement. <coughs> so they'll collide. There'll be most likely some sort of overlap. We want to move that overlap apart so that they are uh, not touching and then set their velocities or swap their velocities over so we'll get them moving apart from each other that's essentially what we're looking to um, accomplish here okay so We've already got detect collision, um, we've already got deck get distance, get center, etc. <coughs> so we're going to um, have a public subroutine, um, just have it as void. We might change that later on. Um, and I'm going to call it collision. In order to detect a collision, I'm going to pass in another person to check this person with. So when we check our collision, we're going to be checking one person against other people. So my collision, uh, start off with an if statement, if, and then we've got our subroutine detect collision, so we're just going to use that. So passing in the person. That we required and that's a boolean so it comes back and gives us true or false so if we detect a collision then what do we need to do well we need to um, change the positions of the of the pair of them so we don't get that overlap which we talked about the reason that we don't want the overlap and we don't just switch the um, switch the velocities round is the next time we we check the next people or possibly check that collision again we don't want them to already be colliding <coughs> so we want to make sure that they're apart that they are not touching so we're going to get uh, the distance double distance Going to get the distance. Um, we've already got a subroutine to help us do that. Again, passing in person as our argument. And then we're going to work out what the overlap is. The overlap is going to be for each of the for each of the people that is half. Um, of the distance minus the width. So half of the distance minus the um, diameter 
is, is what our width is in this case because we're, we're making a, a circle not an ellipse <coughs> okay and that's the amount of overlap for each each of the circles hence why we've done times by 0.5 because we want to move both of them half the amount um, and do that we're going to get it to just change their positions around change their positions around so um, I'm going to make a subroutine to help us do that again I'm going to be lazy and get this get the, the get visual studio to help us do that so i'm going to call it change um position change position um and we're going to change by a certain overlap um pass in the distance and Finally, the other person, the person that we're colliding with, that we're um, <coughs> that we're trying to move, also. So, a little light bulb, and get it to generate the method for changing position, and it goes and makes that for us, giving us the parameters existing. We don't need the not implemented bit get rid of that and it's all about changing the x and the y positions so x is going to be minus um the overlap <coughs> the overlap times by the difference in x between the two people divided by the distance now it doesn't like that because that's all going to be a double so again we can do some casting to being a float so we want all of that to be a float And then a very similar thing for y, but uh, with the difference in y. So almost exactly the same. So changing it for y and y. So that's going to change um, this person, this object, this uh, x and y, and we need to make sure that we do it for the person we've detected that we've collided with, so person as well. So we're going to copy this code um, and paste it here, but instead of x and y changing, you're going to have person dot x and person dot y changing and instead of subtracting just need to do the opposite so they're pushed pushed apart so which whichever way um they're overlapping one's going to be pushed apart one way one's going to be pushed apart the other so that's our overlap or, or changing our positions to make sure that we don't we don't have that overlap so there's going to be a gap between between the two. <coughs> and then finally we needed to change their velocities over. Changing the direction that they're traveling in. Again, we're going to be lazy and, and help get uh, Visual Studio to help us um, change. Oh, I'm going to call it swap velocities. Swap velocities. 
and we're going to need the person in order to swap them over with. It's not going to exist, so we generate it, and there it is. <coughs> So in order to swap them over, um, I'm just going to make two temporary temporary variables, temp uh, vx, temp velocity x, and person dot vx, and temp vy plus person dot vy. So I've placed the person objects um, vector x and vector y into temp vector x, temp vector y. Um, and now I can change what this one is because we want to swap it over. We want it to be this vx and person dot vy equal to vy and then finally vx equals temp vx and vy equals temp vy <coughs> so that will help us swap the velocities so during a, a collision or when we're checking collisions, we're passing in a person to check against. If we detect a collision, so if the distance is less than uh, the width or height of our ball, the diameter of our, our person, then we get the distance, uh, we calculate what the overlap is, mm -hmm. calculate what the overlap is, change them so that they are not overlapping, swap the velocities, and hopefully that should have dealt with the collisions. Um, currently we've not referenced it, so this is going to be done every time a tick. So if we look inside the, the time a tick here, so this is called every, I think it's still called every 200th of a second. Um, We've got the for each loop going through and moving each person. And then inside of that, we need to check every person against every other person in the in the simulation. So we're going to have another for each loop to do the checking of collisions for us. Uh, so we've got person, I'm going to call it other P inside of the collection people so inside of our array that we made before and this is where we're going to detect if the or we're going to we're going to check for collisions um we're checking every person against every other person but we're going through this array twice we want to make sure that we're not colliding with ourselves or the person's not colliding with themselves so we're just going to make sure that um we're only doing this if p is not equal to other p. Because it's pointless checking one person against themselves. They are definitely going to have collided. Um, so we don't want that. And then p dot collision, and we're checking it against the other p, the other person. <coughs> so for every single person in the array, we move them, and then for every single person, every single other person in the array, we go and check if they've collided with this person. And that's for every single one. It's not overly efficient, this, um, this way of doing it, but we're checking for collisions one person against every other person. And we run it, and fingers crossed, we should see um the individual people colliding with each other so what we'll do is reduce the amount so we'll go for 21 
so we should be able to see it a bit more and yeah we can see some uh, collision going on try and focus on individual ones yeah, the collision's looking quite good uh, the velocities in them are changing uh, we're swapping the velocities over when they make contact with each other um, no real concerns it looks quite realistic if we had a situation where we had friction free um, movement yeah that looks good so um, we increase the amount that we've got and we've still got them all bouncing around uh, swapping velocities across the way uh, go for an extreme example 500 of them and we start to see some sort of performance drop um, because for every one person that we've got we're checking against another another n amount of people um, so we've actually got a way of describing this sort of efficiency in, in big O notation um, and this algorithm because it's a for loop inside a for loop it would be n squared so our efficiency as we keep running this or the efficiency of our code <coughs> Is going to be um, O n squared. So if we were to plot this on some on a graph of some sort, it'd be going up like that. So as the number of extra, extra in this case people circles increases, the amount of time that the algorithm needs to run increases and that's because we've got a for loop inside of a for loop if we just had a single for loop like we had when we were just doing the movement the efficiency would be O n and it would be a linear progression so as the amount of things increased the amount of time the algorithms took to execute would increase linearly. But this, as we in increase the amount here, um, the efficiency of the algorithm is not as good with n squared. Um, we'll be able to claw back some of this efficiency when we've got um, when we've got people that don't move. When we've got people that are social distancing, they won't have to do a collision check against every other. We'll only be bothered about the ones that are moving, checking every single other uh, person along the way. So I'm not too concerned about um, about that. If we take it down to 300, get 300 bang on, missed it again. And reset it. We can see the performance increases again less stuttering um, and to get it exactly 256 um, noting that the performance is actually okay here and when we have some that we are going to mimic as social distancing we won't have to check those moving all around each other If you're in any doubt about what we've done today in terms of the collision, um, the overlap, the detecting collisions, the um, swapping the velocities, um, what I'll do is I'll make sure I'll link you to um, one one long coder um, and his video on uh, collision, which is really good. Uh, it goes into a bit more depth um, of, of dealing with elastic collision and dealing with um, you know things with different um, circles of different sizes and um, and different masses for for elastic collision and goes into explain uh, collision a little bit more 
<coughs> and how collision could be executed on um, on a program. Ours is a sim more simplistic method because our circles are all the same size and mass. Um, so we we it makes it a little bit easier for us. Um, but if you're interested in um, collision like that um, and to know more about elastic collisions, um, he's your man because he does a very good job of explaining um, how everything is resolved and how the, the balls are um, in contact with each other and um, how they react to each other if they've got different masses, different sizes, etc. So I'll make sure I'll, load, um, I'll link that in the description. <coughs> As for now, we're at the situation where we've got some controls on our form. We've got um, we've got our virtual people, our little blue people, um, who start off not touching, and we've got some collision between them. Where they move around. And in the next video, we'll finally get round to uh, infecting one of these and spreading that infection around. Um, so, next time, we want to implement some social distancing so not all of these balls move around. And uh, that will increase our performance when we have a larger amount of uh, people or balls traveling around um, and enable us to do our simulation a bit better. So we're gonna we're gonna add some extra controls and get some infection on the go. Because we've got this collision, we know that we can detect when uh, two of these have touched. Um, so we really wanna get some, um, some infection going because that's what this thing has all been about. <laughs>